Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Cami, and in today's video, we're going to be doing an AliExpress stationery haul. As you can tell by the decoration and my fingernails, I am definitely in the holiday spirit. And it's not really because the items that I got are Christmas or wintery themed at all. It's actually because I purchase all of these items as a Christmas gift to myself. I normally don't shop at AliExpress because of the fact that it comes from China and it takes too long to get here, but I've been hoarding these items on my cart for quite some time and I finally bit the bullet and purchased all these goodies. So I'm going to be going through them and showing you guys what I purchased. And then at the end of the video, we're gonna be doing a quick little journal with me session. You're going to notice that all of the items in this video are going to be of the same theme. I'm going to be doing a Victorian secret garden theme for most of my notebooks next year because I love the Victorian era. I like the charm of a secret garden and since I do love gardening and flowers, I thought that would just be perfect. All right, let's get right into it. Now the first set of items that I'm going to show you are the smallest set and these are some stamps that I got. Actually there's only two stores that I shopped at so I will link everything in the description below. The first thing I got were these monthly stamps so they just have the shortened abbreviation for each month in a serif font. You have January through December and everything is in a small compact little tiny cute box by the way. So I wanted some monthly stamps if I needed to quickly set up a spread and I didn't want to worry about hand lettering or anything like that. I also got these matching number stamps as well so I can put the dates in it and it also comes in a cute tiny little box. Like I said, the purpose of getting these two is so I can quickly fill in dates if I need to on my journals or my bullet journals or my planners. And another date stamp I got is this super cute, I don't even know what do you call this, but it's just a uh, rot rotating desk d date stamp. I don't know what I'm saying. I'll find the proper name for it uh, and link it below, but I really liked the look of it. So it's got a wooden handle and a tiny little wooden stand. And you basically just use these dials here to pick the year, the month, and the day, and then you can stamp your pages. So I have something like this already for my sketchbooks, but I wanted something with a more antique vintage kind of vibe for my videos. The next set of items are actually a bunch of washi tapes, starting with this one. It is a box of 12 different colors and it's a cooler palette. You've got a lot of blues and greens and a couple of browns here, but I actually have the same set but in the warmer tones. So I wanted to kind of complete the collection and I used these a lot in my spreads because they're just so versatile. I really needed more muted solid colors. The next set of washi tapes. These are three craft washi tapes in three different patterns. I have one with handwriting script on it, a plain one and a grid one. These just kind of go with everything and if I really wanted something that was really versatile, craft is always the way to go. And the last three washi tapes I have here, one is a frame, a Victorian sort of themed framed washi tape so I can cut these up and pick different shapes and sizes and put them all on my spreads. But yeah, I've got something like this and since it's on a white, almost transparent washi tape, I can kind of layer it and it'll look really nice. The next tape I have is a mushroom nature themed washi tape. So you have little different cute mushrooms on here. Again, I can cut out these little images and stick them in my journals. And of course, no vintage collection would be complete without a set of ticket stub washi tapes. I 
wanted something that I could use as either just a uh, pattern strip or if I wanted to cut them up. So this is why I got this tape. Moving on to another smaller section and this is gonna cause a bit of a glare so I'm really sorry. These are the stickers that I purchased starting with these transparent flower stickers. I wanted to really embrace the gardening theme so I made sure that I had enough flower floral stickers. The fact that they're clear really makes it nice when you are layering it with other materials so that's why I got these. The next set of stickers I got are washi tape stickers so these are illustrated flowers and I wanted something that were on the larger side if I wanted to kind of make full page spreads or just take up a lot of room on a particular page and the same with these butterfly stickers. They're all more of a small to medium size just to fill up space and I like that they're um, a bunch of different colors so I can either um, go crazy with a color palette or just kind of pick any of the muted tones as well. And then finally there is this tiny little box which is a box of sticker stamps. They are just plant stickers that look like stamps so they're nice to add just a little bit of detail. The only thing I don't like is that they're a little glossy and honestly it doesn't look too bad in person but on camera it just kind of shines a little too much but other than that I really wanted it. Also this is the pack of foliage so all of it is a greener tone so Green goes with everything, plus it's my favorite color. Fitting in both the washi tape and sticker category is this little pouch of pocket tapes with a variety of vintage type stickers. They're in different sizes, so I have ticket stubs in a larger, thicker width. I've got some thinner strips as well, and there are little round circle ones. So I wanted something that was just like a hodgepodge of different sizes and also I like that it comes in a pouch so I can just put this in one of my pencil cases or take some out and shove it into the back of a notebook but that's why I purchased this. Moving on to one of the larger collections. So I purchased a bunch of paper ephemera because I I haven't really collected any of these and I know that it's really nice to have just different kind of colors and textures, um, patterns when it comes to collaging, but I didn't have anything so I wanted to stock up on, you guessed it, some floral botanical patterns in a sort of Victorian theme. So I got one, two, three, four, five of these regular patterned paper and I have mostly roses I think. Yeah, most of these are roses. And then this one I think is just a bunch of different flowers with scripts on it. So I wanted to stock up on that. And then I also got these lace patterned paper. It's the same in each one. I don't think this is a variety pack, but it's just got some patterns of some lace on a parchment paper. And so I wanted something that could add a little bit more just visual detail in the spreads that I wanna make without having to go too crazy with the patterns. And here are little pieces of lace that I can use in my spreads, either tear up or glue or tape down and layer. They're actually super thin so they make a really nice layering material and the detail of the lace is actually super fine as well. So that just adds a really nice touch. And the last two items I have here are just pads of paper. This one is a nature theme, so it's 
looks like they're just, you know, ripped out of some science magazine or book. And the other one is a bunch of receipts and ledgers to add, again, more style and design to the spreads. And finally, the last group I have is several material packs. And what these are is just kind of a, a variety of different types of paper ephemera, tags, stickers. This one's already opened. This is what I opened last night when I first recorded this. Each item comes with storage bags so you could store everything in. I cut mine up because I didn't know that's what it was for until it was too late. It's got some tags with some craft, or not craft, some like twine. And I have a couple of different styles here. This one is a floral pattern. This is sort of a script floral pattern. And this one is just another floral. This one's more vintage. What I really liked about this was the use of text and different fonts. I wanted something like that. This is like a recipe version. So again, I liked the text as well. And then pictures of food because who doesn't like pictures of food? And this last one was also a floral, but way too messy to take out. But I really liked it because there's this natural paper like fibrous looking uh, paper, so I got it as well. So if you don't really want to spend too much money in getting a bunch of supplies, I suggest looking into material packs because you get a bit of everything because there's stickers, tags, paper, envelopes, you name it. And to finish off this video, I wanted to end with a journaling session. I mentioned earlier in the video that the first spread that I made last night using all of the supplies that I purchased didn't turn out that well. Actually, no, the spread was fine. Just a little bit overboard with the collaging, but the footage didn't turn out very well. The lighting was off and the audio wasn't that great, so that's why I'm re-recording everything. But this time, I'm going to use all the supplies that I purchased and that you saw in this video, but I will do it with a holiday theme. So if you want to journal along with me, go ahead and grab a drink or a snack. This is actually my favorite journaling snack. It is a Kinder Bueno, which is basically a wafer chocolate bar with hazelnut filling. If you've had Nutella before, it's very similar to that, but a little bit creamier. Grab your favorite supplies and let's get journaling. Before I get started, I wanted to address a comment that one of the viewers made on my December Plan With Me video. Their name is Taylor and Carolina, and they say, can you show how any dark or saturated markers ghost or bleed? Thank you. I really appreciate the comment, and I can't believe I didn't do this already, but I wanted to show you guys how a couple of markers do on this particular paper. Again, this is just a regular um, generic traveler's notebook insert that I got on Amazon. The paper is fairly thick, but I don't think it's anything special. It just feels like normal paper to me. So I'm gonna do a quick marker test per Taylor and Carolina's comment. And these are the markers I'm gonna be using, and hopefully these are dark or saturated enough. I have an Ohuhu marker, which is an alcohol-based marker. It's similar to like Copic markers, but very, very cheapy brand. So if you like the alcohol-based markers, but don't wanna spend a ton of money on Copics, you can go for the Ohuhu brand. Then I have a Tombow Dual brush pen, a Crayola Super Tip, a Faber-Castell pit, Artist Pit Pen, a Kuretake Metallic Brush Pen, in the gold color and a regular Sharpie. And I also have a zebra mild liner. So I'm gonna just do a quick pen test so that I could answer their question. So here's the mild liner. I'm gonna just do a generic one. And I'm gonna go over this one a couple times so we can see how that goes. Then I'm gonna do the Tombow dual brush pen a single time first. And then we're gonna go over a few times. And I'm already noticing the paper starting to come up when you go over it, so it's a good thing I'm testing this now. The Crayola Super Tip. 
which I think is a water-based, so we probably won't get too much bleeding. Now we're gonna go with the Faber-Castell Artist Pit Pen in black, the metallic gold pen, that didn't do too bad. And now the two alcohol-based markers. The alcohol-based marker didn't do so bad on this side. The paper didn't start coming up like it did on the mild liner. And here is the dreaded Sharpie. This is probably gonna go through the paper. <laughs> and I'd be surprised if it doesn't go through to the other side. Okay, here we go. So we can see that everything from the top here, from the mod liner down to the Kiritake, did not bleed through at all. There's a little bit of ghosting because they're a little bit of a darker color, but if I bring the camera up close, You'll see that it's not too bad. You can still make out the gray dots on the page. So it really depends on your preference. If I tilt the notebook to the side, you actually don't really see it at all. It's only when it's flat on another paper can you really tell. So it really depends on what your preference is and what you're using it for. And of course, the two alcohol-based ones bled through. The Ohuhu marker not only completely bled through the other side, but it m marked the other paper, and then the Sharpie as well. So that was the marker test, and I hope that answers your question. Taylor and Carolina, thank you again. And if you guys have any other questions or want me to try something out, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section, and I will do my best to get back to you or try to work it into a video. All right, now let's get to journaling.
So here is the finished spread and I actually think I did a pretty good job. Yesterday when I did my first attempt at doing a spread, I went kind of overboard with the ephemera, but this time I was able to dial back and didn't do too much, but I went crazy with the text. I filled in way too much space um, and I started just kind of rambling, but I think that that's okay. That's kind of why I want a journal anyway. So I am really happy with the way that it turned out. The only thing is that my fountain pen started to leak a little bit and I noticed that the tip of my, um, the nib of the fountain pen started to pick up some of the paper and I know that this isn't the type of paper that's best for fountain pens so if you do get this just a little tip there for you. And I think the only thing I would change is the color of the brush lettering. I don't really have that many markers so I couldn't pick something that matched what I had with the paper choices and color choices, but maybe next time what I can do is mix it in paint and just use a paintbrush to letter the headers. Also, I feel like my haul was really decent. I still have so much of the material that I didn't use and I can use this in the future. So I'm really pleased with the selection of items that I have and I don't really think I'm going to be needing too much in the new year. Stick around because I will definitely be doing more hauls. I kind of went insane with the Black Friday deals so if you like the stationery haul video and you want to see more journal with me, be sure to subscribe and uh, like the video so I know that you want to see more of this. And with that being said, I want to say have a wonderful week and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.